Hi, my name is Bursha Chaharda and we're talking about Bitcoin, blockchain and a cryptocurrency on with my man Prosper on his show, Online Prosperity. And we'll be talking into it to taking you to the next level into the cryptocurrency and blockchain. Stay in tuned. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got Bersha himself. Bersha, how are you doing, my man? I'm great, brother. How are you doing, my man? Fantastic. Well, obviously, in this whole digital marketing space, we do come across people that have a bit of knowledge about certain things that we might not be able to uh, translate to you. You, if you have not been living under a rock for the last year or two or 15 years, you might have heard of the current buzzword, which is cryptocurrency. Now, cryptocurrency is, I can't explain what it is because I've never really ventured into it. That's the reason why we bring in experts so they can explain to us how it actually works and what is involved and et cetera, et cetera. So the financial world can be a very big and confusing place and full of strange terms and useful forms of you know currency and endless trading options and unfortunately most of us are not tech savvy and you know the integration between the internet and our daily lives it has allowed them you know financial worlds to evolve so we don't want to be left behind that's why we bring in people that will help us have businesses that are profitable and enjoyable like Bersha himself. Bersha, did I say that right? Absolutely, 100%, 100%. And, uh, and I totally agree with you saying that, you know, um, if anybody not uh, getting into like a, a yourself, you are into digital marketing and what you talk about every single day, um, it's all about, uh, as, as, as we were talking before, the, the rewiring the brain, where we're heading, where the digital, I would call it as a digital transformation. I actually threw an article yesterday on, uh, uh, on Medium that a digital transformation. So um, we are living in an era where, um, you know, it's no longer, um, everybody is a celebrity in a, in a sense, right? Because you got a smartphone and you can jump on it and then you can start talking what your ideas, what your, your inspiration, what your goals are. And if people are interested, they can, they can talk to you or they can, you're going to get on to that. So in terms of cryptocurrency, um, uh, forget about money, forget about the market, forget about everything, right? Uh, I, I want to take you a little bit um, or your audience to, to, to the space where we need to understand that what are the fundamentals, right? So um, similar way, the digital marketing, when, when digital marketing started, the day internet started, that's where the digital marketing started. Um, um, uh, I'm sure you know Gary Vaynerchuk, um, he had a family business where they're making $4 million a, a year. And he was the second person who took his one business on internet uh, uh, back in 1996. And in 36 months, he scored $52 million from $4 million to $52 million, right? So the, what I'm trying to say is he understood the power of internet. He understood the technology is coming. He took, he took a plunge and that's where his business is exploded, right? So it's a, it's a, um, uh, uh, with the cryptocurrencies, with the blockchain, it's a next phase of internet. Like, like think about this way, right? Um, um, it, it's, it's like a, um, we are heading in a direction where we need, a, like a, we had a bigger issue in terms of security, how we can transfer data from one place to, to another place, how we can transfer money to one place to another place. Why? Because we want to do the business on a global basis, but we want to make sure it, it, it's secured. It's, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's not lose, right? So um, that's where the cryptocurrency and the blockchain taking a place, which I will call as the next generation of internet. It's not different from internet. It's a next, it's just like an evolving space for the internet. Does that make a sense a little bit? Of course it does. All right. So, well, essentially that, that is so much, um, you know, valuable information there, but let's take it back a little bit. 
All right, let's yep. take it back a little bit so that we can actually understand what exactly is Bitcoin because all of this is um, confusing. You know, um, the one thing that I understand about it is no one single entity controls this currency. All right, so in the system that we're used to right now, um, it's very confusing to start off with money and financials is very confusing and now add another layer of you know <laughs> making it a decentralized uh, platform that whole confusion comes in and um, it's chalk and cheese so the general concept of a currency is that money and is owned and controlled by a bank right and then it rises and falls in value based on whatever global market it's it's being represented in and whatever it's backing it as a source of value so you can actually physically hold the currency and trade it in exchange for value. Now, Bitcoin defies this, all right? You cannot touch it. You cannot um, guarantee its value. And it is, in fact, controlled by anyone that uses the Bitcoin software. And, you know, um, they use this as a currency to log in and validate whoever logs in and then they validate whatever activities of the Bitcoin across the globe. Now, how can an average person like me that just really wants a simple life keep up with all of that no you're not you're not living a simple life uh, prosper <laughs> if you telling people that uh, you're living a simple life and, and uh, digital live long right so uh, um, i would look um let i will take a step back and then uh, um I will start a step by step the process we can understand a little bit um, um, in, a, in a structured way. So um, um, the, before we even get into the Bitcoin, we need to understand there's an underneath technology called a blockchain, right? What is a blockchain, right? It's, it's a, like a, it, it, the, the way you got to understand blockchain is a ledger, right? So think about in the olden days, any transaction you do, what you do, you write it down. Or the person who you the transaction, they write it down. And they, uh, they write a bit like a, they have a different books, like a volume one, volume two, volume three, volume four, things like that, right? So, um, and what it means is if you want to look at the transaction which happened uh, 30 years ago, they will look at the volume one and they check it out. Okay, the transaction is there, right? So the, what will happen in terms of blockchain, we got to think as an ledger, right? Every transaction happen on blockchain, it got recorded in the form of a blocks, right? So what is a blocks? Blocks is a, like a number of transaction, which is consist in one block. Every time somebody do a transaction, it got recorded. So what is the purpose of that it got recorded? It, it never got duplicated. So now we, you are in the digital world. We had an issue with the di, uh, double spending. We have an issue with the duplication. So blockchain destroy all of that. Right. So that's that's the little background of a blockchain. I can talk for hours, but I'm not going to go into too much details of it. That's the simplest way. It's a ledger where all the transaction get recorded. Every transaction you do, and what happened is it's to remove the double spending. And uh, you know, uh, um, uh, the, uh, and also um, it, it, now we're gonna come. So think about a blockchain as an internet. Let's uh, let's take the easy analogy. Let's think about a blockchain is an a, as an internet. So what what do we have? Inter internet is a dumb network. What what it means is basically you can connect any smart device with it right and then you can make it functional whatever you want to do you want to do banking you can do it you want to do healthcare system you can do it you want to do uh, you want to build an application called facebook you build it you want to build twitter on top you can build it and in let, let, let's uh, narrow down a little bit more so just talk about it uh, internet and then platform called facebook right so now we got a Internet on the bottom, which is underneath technology, which is we call it blockchain on the other side. So we got it on the top. We got a uh, Facebook, which is a platform. So why I'm calling it as a platform rather than an application because inside the block, uh, inside the Facebook, you can do multiple applications. Like you can sell stuff, you can do videos, you can make groups, like different things, like you know, or, or on on Facebook. So so what do we have? We have an internet. 
And we, on top of that, we have a platform called Facebook, and on Facebook, we have a multiple of applications, right? So now I'll put that on the side. So first of all, we got a blockchain is like an internet. And on top of that, we got a Bitcoin, right? So Bitcoin is a platform, right? So you don't take it as it is. I'm just making it analogy so that we, your viewer can understand so that how that works, right? So on top of that is a Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a platform, right? Bitcoin is a currency. Bitcoin is a decentralized system, right? So, so what it means is basically, so what we did is on top of the blockchain, we design a platform, right? So where you can, the first application of the Bitcoin is money. I'm not saying Bitcoin is a money, right? I'm saying first application is a money. We will see what's coming in the future, right? So uh, there's a multiple application being start building on top of the Bitcoin as well, right? So um, the first application we call as a money. So why, why are we going to consider a uh, Bitcoin as an, a money or a tra like a, you know, the transaction we can do the transaction uh, between, um, between the, 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 other party like you and me or to buy stuff right can we do it with when yes we can so are we having an issue with the bitcoin that the, 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 there's a lot of transactions happening it's not uh, it's not um, uh, the bitcoin uh, bitcoin network is getting flooded with the transaction they are having an issue are they working are the developer are working to solve this issue yes they are right it's called a lightning network so which is another another layer on top of the bitcoin where once the lightning network were built upon the on the bitcoin what's going to happen is you can do more than a transaction of visa i think it's like a, a hundred thousand per second somewhere along those lines i'm not quite sure the number so it gonna surpass the number of transactions you can do in visa or mastercard this is crazy right so what the thing is let, let's let's have a step back and so we would just stay on there so is that making sense a little bit now to, uh, is like an internet on top of facebook and then an application same thing with the blockchain and on top of that is a bitcoin on yep. bitcoin there's one component is a money is that make sense a little bit here uh, up to here uh, prosper yeah yeah definitely so you've now left me just thinking to myself if it is decentralized and if you physically don't have to print bills what then or bills or coins what then can stop anyone from creating their own bitcoin or whatever currency and does that not devalue the currency or render it worthless if you know a you know people can just keep creating their own um you know infinite number of coins love that love that question prosper love that because um I, I saw in your post uh you're gonna create a prosper coin i'm gonna create a busha coin right so um <laughs> now i'm not joking uh, prosper it's it's a very I, I i love the question you asked that right don't you think it's a great way of looking anybody can create their own currency so what it means what it means take a step back in the back in the olden days there's a barter system right there's a barter system right so what do you do you give me a wheat i'll give you a call uh, you know i'll give you a cow right or whatever it is right so think about it if you have a prosper coin i have a bullshit coin right so if my coin or my audience they're happy to take a bullshit coin so you take the bullshit coin from me as a like in yourself and then i have a prosper coin so what's going to happen is you can attack my audience with the bullshit coin i can attack your your audience with the with the prosper so what is what is the money money is the exchange of value right so it gives you will see right now we have i, I think nearly thousand altcoins you will see uh, uh, thousands of altcoins or maybe hundreds of thousands of altcoins in the coming future it's not a, it's not a bad thing it's a great thing so i'll give you let me give you an example in your victoria i think there's a uh, a school called warana primary school yes. not pronouncing it right but it, it, it's it's in somewhere uh, uh in the country they have a stem cell of blockchain 
And I actually posted on my Facebook page. If your audience want to look at it, they can look at it. So what it is, the kids make their first coin is called a Varana coin. Can you believe it? So what it means is with that coin, they're sharing their content around the globe. They're sharing their content around the globe using the platform called Steemit. I won't go into the Steemit right now. I'll, uh, I'll keep it on the side. So what I'm trying to say is if you're thinking people are not making coin, kids are making coin, Warana coin. So what it means is that, you know, uh, um, uh, so they are primary school students. They are, they're not high school students. They are primary school students. And there is a company called Global Blockchain in South Bank, which is, I did a live probably um, two months ago. I was there. And actually, they, were, they helped that school to build a stem cell. And that, that's where the kids are getting educated. Think about it. Somebody getting an education right now about digital marketing. Somebody getting an education right now about blockchain. What's going to happen? It's going to happen innovation. It's going to happen in a massive level. The, the things we haven't even projected yet. I think I'm too late, man. I think I'm too late to, to get into this, right? But I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that I'm into it, right? So what is that making sense a little bit more? Uh, no, no it, it actually does. Um, obviously, I mean, obviously innovation happens, um, you know, while people were refusing to let go of their horse carriages. Uh, people like Henry Ford came in with the automobile and then they took over everything, you know. Um, the way we know how we can fly between places if the Wright brothers did not um, you know, persevere and go ahead in, you know, November 1903, I think when they made their first flight, um, we wouldn't be flying. So everything happens in due course and, you know, in time. But my biggest concern is Bitcoins have no inherent or set value. Okay. Now, if you look at a dollar bill, I don't have money in my pocket right now. I, I cannot make my own money. I have to wait until the bank gives me, which is what I'm used to. Um, if you look at a dollar bill, right, um, you know that it's simply a piece of paper, like you guys would call it, with a number on it. And, you know, it's got some fancy pictures and it says it's worth $1 or $2. But in fact, the value um, is what it says it does. But is that the same with the Bitcoin? Like the value of the one, do you say it's one bit or $1 or how do you refer to it? Um, you know, when you're calling it the, the digital pieces of code that are now starting to be worth money. And, you know, can you actually trade real goods and services with them? Um, you know, in as much as you can say, hi, here's my Bitcoin. Give me change. Yes. Um, I mean, if you want to uh, uh, anticipate with my services, I'm more than happy to take a Bitcoin or Ethereum. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, Prosper, yes, uh, the, your answer to your question is yes. The first thing is we call, um, because uh, what is a dollar bill? If you think about it, a dollar bill is that we all agreed upon it when the government, this is the dollar bill, whether it's a US or Australian or Indian or whatever it is, right? So uh, we agreed upon it that it's, it's go back a thousand years back. What, what, what the goldsmiths did, they start writing on it and then other person trusted and then that's how the money whole gamut of money started, right? So it's the same thing with the government, right? So we all trust that, you know, if the government says $10, that's how much is the value is, right? So we call as, uh, in terms of Bitcoin, we call as consensus, right? So everybody agreed upon, so it's like a voting system inside the system. It's a great, it's a great system. All we got to understand is the first thing we need to understand is the fundamentals. Before we question it, the, the, uh, I made a video probably three weeks ago about ask the right question, right? So what it means is ask the right question. Rather than, rather than questioning that Bitcoin, is, is that a valid? Is that a regulated? Is that a, is that a, is that having any intrinsic value? Is that, you know, rather than asking these questions, rephrase, re, rewire the brand, ask this question. What are the opportunities cryptocurrency and Bitcoin bringing to the society? How 
the cryptocurrency and the Bitcoin are helping the human being to evolve, the businesses to evolve. How the Bitcoin is actually going to help or helping the society to move, move forward. So now you're asking the same question, but in a very different context. So what are you looking for? You're looking for answers now. Rather than questioning it, you're looking for answer. Does that make sense a little bit? Yes, 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 yes. Go on, I'm listening. So, <laughs> yeah. So, 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 what happened is in in terms of Bitcoin. What, what? Because the right now, it's all all about is money. Bitcoin is money. The market has gone to six thousand dollars Australian dollars. It's gone back to four thousand dollars. It's gone back again five thousand five thousand dollars. So what's what's happening is people are so much concerned and wrapped about one application. Money is a simple reward to the Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not a money. It's served the purpose of money, if that makes sense, right? So money is a reward system. So what it means, when I say that, what it means. So if you're charging $10,000 or $20,000 for your services, right? So if somebody gave you $20,000, is that prosper is a $10,000? No, prosper, prosper is a prosper. It's 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 providing services. The service the uh, the prosper is providing. That's where somebody get a value out of it, and then they say, "Here you go, ten thousand dollar or twenty thousand dollar. I'm more than happy to buy because I got the service from you." So it's a similar thing. When when the Bitcoin is hitting from six hundred dollar to six thousand dollar, Bitcoin is a serving the service back to the community so it's like a so what i'm what i'm trying to say is that uh, uh, the, the money is a reward to the bitcoin so the question is um is that a speculative market is that a uh, is that a bubble right i've seen ray dalio or a lot of respect for ray dalio uh jimmy Dimon, who is a jp morgan ceo um so a lot of people, including Jimmy Morgan and, and Ray Dalio together, Ray Dalio is talking totally, totally different about Bitcoin and JP, uh, uh, Jimmy Diamond is talking totally differently about Bitcoin. So the two separate entities. Uh, I think what Ray Dalio is talking about uh, uh, Bitcoin is very logical. Right, and and he want people to understand the logical concept what Bitcoin what Bitcoin is bringing and how it can be a bubble, right? So whether it's a bubble, it's not a bubble. Nobody like nobody can anticipate that. Nobody can anticipate that. What Ray Dalio was doing, he had a, he has a criteria to when when uh, whether it's a normal uh, uh, in terms of economic, in economic system when there is a bubble so he had a system he has a set of principle where he can look at those principles and like i say it's a bubble so what uh, what i'm guessing what ray dalio is doing he's looking at those principles and looking at the bitcoin and he's calling it a bubble but he's not saying in a bad way he's saying is a bitcoin could be a money could be a currency so uh, and one of the interview i listened to ray dalio with the tim ferris where he said it he's not a hundred percent understand the cryptocurrency and bitcoin which makes sense to me which made sense to me why cannot you comment forcefully on something when you don't understand the fundamental i'm not saying ray dalio don't understand it what i'm saying is if he admitted in tim ferris interview that he he he's not fully comprehend that but on the other side jimmy diamond he's he he's a lunatic a little bit in that sense right he's just calling it a bitcoin is a fraud without even understanding it and people quote him uh, uh, he was doing uh, helping his clients to do the trading with the big one so like, that's all uh, um, uh, you know too much uh, uh, um, uh, 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 fright it's too much of a misunderstanding happening into this into 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 the fact don't forget about that don't get into that so you gotta ask as a normal person as you asked me before what Bitcoin is bringing for you? What Bitcoin is for you? Is that a Bitcoin backed by something? Yes, it is backed by consensus. It's backed by the system. So what it means is if you, uh, let's say there is a, uh, uh, we had an issue with the economy. What we do, the last thing we do, we print money. You you know that you come from Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. One trillion. <laughs> I'm, I'm a billionaire, right? by the way. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, so what I'm trying to say is, in Bitcoin, people need to understand that Bitcoin, we got only 21 million Bitcoin. That's all we got, right? So can you print a Bitcoin as like a dollar bill? No, you cannot. Why you cannot print a Bitcoin? The guy who created Bitcoin and blockchain, we don't know whether it was a group of geeks, whether he was a woman, whether he was a guy, we don't know. His name, his name is Hitoshi Nakamoto, right? So when he created Bitcoin and blockchain, he designed the system in a such a way, right? So uh, in 2008, if you create a block, which is the number of transactions, every block created on the blockchain, it takes 10 minutes to create a block. A, a block one. So what happened is once the block is created, Back then, 50 Bitcoin will come out of the system automatic. Nobody is touching it. As soon as the as soon as the block block uh, block boot on the on the on the on the blockchain, the 50 50 Bitcoin comes up. He was a very clever dude. He knew that nobody gonna believe into the into the Bitcoin and blockchain. So he gave it four years time. Every four years, a reward of Bitcoin got halved into the system. Right. So what it means is in 2000, if the one block created with 50 Bitcoin, in 2012, it becomes a 25 Bitcoin. In 2016, it becomes a 12.5 Bitcoin. So every time now, right now, if the, if the block happens on blockchain, block built in 10 minutes, the system got rewarded with a 12.5 Bitcoin. Right. So it's going to continue until another four years. And then it's going to go half in 2020, 6.25, and it's going to continue. The last Bitcoin will come out on this planet Earth, 2040. 2040. So it's like 113 years later, right? So that's where it makes a very valuable Bitcoin that you cannot go and simply go and press the button and create a Bitcoin. No, you got to go through the system. So I made actually comprehensive video that how the mining work. I'm not going to get too much detail because there's a lot of to talk about, but I'll touch on the topics, right? So what happened is there's a lot of uh, mining farms. It's like a lot of, you need a bigger machinery, a lot, a lot of big computers to actually mine a Bitcoin. So I was listening to John McAfee, you know, the, 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 you know, the founder of, uh, yeah, uh, you know, McAfee. Yeah. 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 So, so, um, he, he was saying that because he, he's into mining, it cost a thousand dollars to actually create a Bitcoin. Right, it's created like electricity, hardware, labor, whatever. It's got thousand dollars to actually create a Bitcoin. So that's the, that's the answer to to your one of your question that you know uh, it's it's got any value. Yes, it is got a value because you cannot just simply go and print a Bitcoin. You need to do a block there to take the another twelve point five Bitcoin out of the system. Right. So um so. Uh, yeah, if any other question regarding this, so I can move forward. Oh, from yeah, there. no, no. So, so obviously, mining Bitcoin is usually a term that means that you're using a computer program to solve mathematical, you know, uh, problems, and then you need to verify these various transactions around the world, and then Bitcoin miners, you know, then then get paid um, a certain number of Bitcoin, which is the twelve point five, which you're talking about. Um, in this, um, you know, uh, day and age in solving these math problems. What if you, what sort of, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm trying to think, is this for everyone? Ask any question. Ask any question. Yeah, no, no, I've got it. But is this, can I sit down in my studio right now and start mining Bitcoin? Yes, you can. But it, the time has passed. You're too late. <laughs> you're too late so what it means that back in 2008 with the normal computer what we're talking about right now you can you you can you can use uh, those normal com like a normal computer hardware system you can uh, you can do um, there's a lot of stories that one of the guy he mined uh, I think 10,000 Bitcoin or something like that and then uh, it was sitting on his hard drive and uh, uh, you know he threw his uh, 
computer into the dump yard and he was after two years later he'd find out he'd become a millionaire but that he he destroyed his computer in the dump yard four days he was just digging deep into with the uh, help of other people to finding that computer to to get his Bitcoin back. So the, I think ten thousand or so. So it was possible back then, two thousand eight. And right now, it's called there's a there's a term called difficulty level. The difficulty level is very high right now. Why? Because as the as we're gonna progress, that's why I say Satoshi Nakamoto was very very clever. He gave the opportunity. He believed in the in the early days, right? He gave the opportunity. So what's happening around? Not you need a kind of supercomputer like a big computer a uh, great hardware uh, uh, and the software to actually to mine a Bitcoin right so if you want to mine a Bitcoin you can but you need a lot of electricity and you need a high efficiency of the hardware but the question is can you mine a Bitcoin yes you can Does yeah that answer to the question? yeah definitely okay that's fine so you see for the next couple of days I'm not gonna show up live I'm going to be coming up with my coal face because, um, you know, <laughs> I'll be mining my coins there. Now, there's one thing about, um, you know, this cryptocurrency that I sort of heard um, that you cannot reverse a transaction or you cannot be forced to pay. So, you know, um, I hear that one of the integral features about Bitcoin is that you can't be forced to pay. What if somebody owes you money? No, can you take back a transaction what if you make a mistake and you you want to cancel that transaction? Or if you send, you know, a company some of your bitcoins for a product, you know, you can't take back that transaction. Or can they repeat bill you or force money to be taken away from you? Now, we are using softwares um, as a service. We are using Netflix. We are using Stan. We are using, um, you know, this uh, Zoom that we're talking on. It's a recurring sort of... Um, payment so how then are people going to be on top of their payments if it's not just going to be like a direct debit and if people are not going to be forced to pay are people just going to get away with you know using services like your phone and not even pay for it because nobody can chase you for the money um let me ask this question is a very different way um if you ever listen to jeff bazos who's a founder of amazon yes um he was he was saying that you know what we do is we 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 find out what people want and then we work backward right backward so he said and then our our integral values are we're gonna give uh, a, a, a cheaper product to the customer in a, a, a in a easiest possible way right let's say that's that's the one of the murder right so he said what we do is when we work backward we make sure we don't do any wastage right we we make sure our system is system is efficient so basically what he's saying that we when we do that transaction we become a very efficient to serve the customer if that makes sense so what it means is so basically he's making he's not he's looking at the customer but what he's doing is he's he's generating more productivity for his company he's making his company more productive that's why he's ruling the world right now and i think his net worth is i think it's surpassed the uh, uh bill guys uh, i think for last two three weeks so yeah, what they, i'm trying to say fluctuate yeah, yeah. yeah. So what I'm trying to say is, so what are you doing is, so you're making the system efficient so the customer get the, the you know, the, 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 what they want. So now I'm going to relate this to with the Bitcoin. So what a Bitcoin is doing to us is it forcing us, don't be lazy, don't like, you know, become efficient when you're doing a transaction with the other person, when you're doing, so what it means is, in, a, in an unconscious manner, but we are asking a different question. We are asking a, a, the question we were wired for for long period. If I make a mistake, right? Why? Because if you think about it, now we are living in an era where we have the tools and technology where, uh, you know, it's becoming lesser and lesser where you make mistakes. I'm not saying you're not going to make a mistake. You want to make a mistake. What I'm trying to say is unconsciously, Bitcoin pushes you to make the right decision when you buy a product, when you buy a service. Now, it depends upon who you work with, who your clients are. 
are the clients like you know I, 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 I know that you work with the high-end clients so when you're working with the low-end clients and when you're working in the high-end client what's the what's the difference with the efficient is a huge right it's a you need to do a less marketing for the high-end client and the, you need to do a lot of a lot of marketing for the lower end client and then they'll be on your back but with the with the, with the on the top and on the top and side of it or you're going to tell them that's what you need they only all they need is a breakthrough bitcoin is a breakthrough it, it's a new way of looking at the future so now the question is can, can you reverse the tr transaction what the question is yours no you cannot right that's where it solved the purpose of double spending that's where it solved the purpose of not duplicating the transaction so another thing is if i'm doing a transaction with you if you made a mistake we are like if you think about it well, i'm gonna give you back if i receive your money i'm gonna give you back the beautiful thing is beautiful thing is nobody can own a bitcoin so nobody can put prosper this is bitcoin it belongs to me it's like a cash you got a hundred dollar bill you give it to me it's mine there's no way you can you can say hey Borussia, you took my hundred dollar this is mine because why because that's cash you cannot lucky you know unless i say okay you are know that it's yours i'll give it back to you right but in terms of what you're talking about is a banking process this is a new way of looking at the system you're talking about the banking why because that's what we wired for last 100 150 years think about it if you train your daughter i'm training my daughter and my son uh, that you know this if you give them nokia what they're gonna say dad are you crazy yeah right? are you crazy <laughs> i, I want to have a smartphone so this is a thing i'm not like i always say do not put another system down right there was a time that nokia was a great innovation and then uh, I, I was listening to the ceo he was saying we didn't do anything wrong but we did not move with the time right so what it means is if you think banking's not doing anything with the blockchain or, or with the cryptocurrency you are at the wrong end my friend like <laughs> so what i'm saying is they are in uh, anz commonwealth westpac they did a um they did a trial back in 2015 uh barclay bank which is from england they did it cleverly and anz invested into the uh, uh into the uh, um, uh, uh, exchange Bitcoin exchange called Coinbase. So somebody out uh, the reporter asked to the ANZ that they said, uh, "Is that a, 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 a did you invest into the into the Bitcoin?" The ANZ said, "No, we invested into the Coinbase exchange." So you saying to me that the you can buy Bitcoin from Coinbase, and but I did not invest into the Bitcoin. So you can understand what I'm trying to say, right? So. Uh, if they are uh, commonwealth is number one into into blockchain and they are doing a massive project i actually did a uh, video uh, but i'm gonna i'm going to write an article about how banking is involved into the blockchain so what i'm trying to say is they're pushing the, the normal people the common man this is a facade this is a fight it's not gonna work at all but they've been doing a research for the last four years or three years how when bitcoin exploited to the common market how can we compete or how can be efficient in a way so think about it this way prospect if i want to send you live in zimbabwe or you live in uh, uh, anywhere in, in the world, right? If I want to do a transaction with you, I want to I want to anticipate with services or product with you, right? So I, I have to send a one million dollar to you, right? So I have to wait for the bank, right, to open up, and then I have to wait till the you know they do that one million transaction with the ID, with the this and that, and then I will say, okay, it will take five days or seven days past the moment I transfer the money money to you right so what what it means in my process is delayed for one week and if i'm paying you a million dollar means that i'm a high-end client i'm gonna do do the bigger things where i'm living right in australia or america where i'm living so but if you do it with the bitcoin or another cryptocurrency let's let's keep it with the bitcoin right so what will happen is if i send it to you 
it takes 30 seconds to receive a $1 million. And the price is the same. The charge is the same, whether you're sending in $10 or $20 or $30, or you're sending a $1 billion to $1 million, whatever it is, the transaction fees remains the same, right? And it gets on 30 seconds. Or um, these days might take 10 minutes, all uh, right, because of the, you know, the crowding, the number of transactions happening on the blockchain. So what I'm trying to say is, Think about, in a way, why you teach a digital marketing to the people because you want people to have a prof profitable and efficient business, right? So that, that's, the, that's where the, you've got to start thinking in a big one in a way as well, that how can I do my business in an efficient manner in the quickest way possible, right? So that now another question people ask, I'm going to answer this one as well. Who, um, you know, the dark web or the people who sell drugs, right? Um, think about when internet started, um, the people who were using, um, using uh, dealing with the drugs or crime, they were using the internet. So you know what I mean? They are the technology pro. They use a cutting edge technology to do their services before it comes to the common amount or the our normal people. So it's that like, you know, if you associate it with Bitcoin with the dark web, that's just the wrong way of looking at it. It's a cutting edge technology. That's why they're using it to make the process efficient and faster to do the thing. We light, we too light. Like I'm just saying, eight years light right now. Uh, there's another cryptocurrency called Monero, which is which is totally you cannot trace that. You cannot like you know now Bitcoin is out of that. You can use Monero to you buy the drugs if you really want to do it, or you want to do the you know other stuff. What I'm saying is, it's always uh, people need to understand why these criminals or thugs or whatever it is they use these services. This is a cutting edge technology. You are. Uh, uh, you are, you know, marketer. I'm a marketer, right? So why we use Zoom? Why we use Facebook Live? Why we use uh, Facebook groups? Why we use uh, YouTube? Why we use LinkedIn? Why we use that? Why we know that it's a cutting edge technology. It's a cutting edge tool. So that's what it is with a Bitcoin and another cryptocurrency. It's a matter of rewiring the brain and go with it, right? Asking the right question. The moment you start asking the right question. Um, I always have in my brain, uh, Prosper, that uh, if there is two years before, I always condemn everything. Now nah, that doesn't work, man. Like it's it's a it's a facade. Like, and I lost a lot of money back two years ago, right? A lot of money. That made me to think uh, in my business. It made me to think how money works, what inflation, deflation, how the economic system works. And then I stumbled upon Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Then I understood the concept um, for 20, 25 days. I glued to the computer screen to understand what Bitcoin is, right? So when I was doing a master's in information system, I looked at the systems. We have a credit card. We had a, you know, the PayPal, PayPass, these sort of things. They were talking about it back then in 2008 in master. But there was a term called e-wallet. And I thought to myself, mate, we use everything else. We never use e-wallet. And e-wallet is using with the cryptocurrency. This is it. And then I start researching full on to understand and grasp the concept. So what I'm trying to say is, before we put any question mark on any system, not just a Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, we need to understand the fundamental. Once we clear the fundamentals, you can do whatever you want, right? Um, it's just a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal, uh, area you can dive in and you'll be floating in for days and months and still be grasping the concept back to you mr prosper <laughs> all right obviously there is a lot that we can um you know get from you and learn this is so much value i can't thank you enough now if you're watching this show up until now thank you so much i know there was a lot to take in and if you haven't subscribed to the show please subscribe because at the end of the day, it's value like this that you won't get anywhere else on the internet. Now, obviously, as Basha, um, you know, would like to go on and, and keep letting us know. Um, and even you might still be sitting on the fence right now. You know, Bitcoin might sound like it's too far-fetched at first. But it's actually a real currency and it's used to buy real things. And there's a variety of merchants that actually accept Bitcoin as payment for items and even Basha has you know invited me and said he will gladly accept 
um, bitcoins from me as well. So both online and um, you know physical stores. So at the end of the day, you do your homework, you do your research, find out what actually works for you. Um, everything is designed to help you or to actually enhance you to have a life that is of a happier existence. Now, Basha, if people really want to know more about um, this cryptocurrency and how it all works, how can people get a hold of you? Okay, so before I answer that question, I wanna um, um, make it clear, that's another point very quickly. Um, I wanna make it clear, Bitcoin is an open source. So what it means is anybody can go and look at the codes, anybody look, go and look at the transaction happening on the blockchain. It's open. That's the, that's the beautiful thing at it. If you are a developer, you can go and build application on top of the Bitcoin network. If you want to help somebody in Zimbabwe, you don't want to involve any third party into it. You don't want to have anybody to take the, the, the cut off that. Right, you can build you can build an application on top of Bitcoin network, and you can have the people who want to donate money in Zimbabwe to help those kids or whatever it is, right? So they can directly pay through that application. No middleman, no third party. The whole, if you send a hundred dollar, if you send a three thousand dollars or three hundred thousand or million dollar, they get the same amount of money on the other end. Nobody can get the cut out of it, right? And if you think about it, PayPal, Visa, network, they were closed network. You're gonna ask this question to yourself, like they won't ever, ever let you in to their system. Why they said it's a potential hack. So the, the you know the people can hack the people can hack into the PayPal or Mastercard. They can steal the money. Bitcoin been open for last nine years. If you wanted to hack into the Bitcoin, you need a half a billion dollar for ten minutes to try to hack into the Bitcoin system. So that's uh, that's that's the point. I want to make it clear. So in in terms of if, if anybody wanted to hold up me, uh, I'm friends with you uh, on Facebook, which is the uh, uh, Busha Chahoda. So people can hold up me on Busha Chahoda. And I also, I got a, I'm a founder and owner of a blockchain business hub. I got a page for that. Uh, and also I had a page for BISC2 channel, which is, you can see on my, on my Facebook channel. Uh, same thing with the, with the, with my, uh, 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 with my YouTube channel, BISC channel which is a B I S C space T U channel so Busha in the Jeet Singh Chahoda to you channel so that's how I describe it so Twitter Busha Chahoda uh, same with the Instagram Busha Chahoda so you can send them send, send me a personal message we can get connected so there's no drama so I, I, I'm gonna say the last words People need to understand the fundamentals, nothing else, the fundamentals. Once you have the clarity on the fundamentals, you understand the power of Bitcoin and the cryptocurrencies and the blockchain, how it's transforming the society and how it's transforming the human's life and helping us to evolve to the next level. Well, I can't thank you enough. You know, your passion really comes out and you really know your stuff. And if you've been watching this uh, video, thank you so much. And obviously you do know that we're on a mission to create content for you that will help you, um, you know, be profitable and so that you can enjoy the work that you're doing out there. And in the profit that you're going to be making, you are going to be looking for investment options and the financial world can be a very confusing place, um, you know, that is filled up with strange terms, unusual forms of currency and endless trading options. So you want to really go in, um, you know, while with all the information so that you're not losing money and you are actually happy doing what you're doing for those that you actually care about. Now, Bersha, thank you so much for your time today. I really, I really appreciate, it, man, uh, to inviting me on, on your show. I'm very grateful, and uh, you know, uh, to your words that um, uh, I will say, understand the fundamentals. That's it. Forget about the trading. Forget about investing into it. Forget about everything else. Understand the fundamental, and that will take you to the next, next level. Thank you, thank so you, much, Prospero. Bersha. I'm really, really cool. thank you so much, Bersha. Be all right. All right. Cool. Wow, bro, you know your stuff. Whoa. <laughs>
uh, I really, I was just really enjoying listening and I was like, wow, I wish I knew digital marketing like the way you know your stuff there. All right, so you can, know, you, can you do me you a favor? Know your stuff, bro. You know your stuff, my man. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right. So can you do me a 